For today's devotional video, I will be reading out of the Case for Christ Study Bible, and uh, we'll be continuing with our theme of looking at one of the books of the Minor Prophets. Today's Minor Prophet is Hosea. Now, um, from Hosea, Lee Strobel makes a case for Christ. He looks at a prophecy that's written about Jesus in Hosea 3.5. The Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God, and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. So this is prophesying about a, a difficult time in the Israelites' history, the time of Jesus, when uh, there was Roman oppression occurring in the land. And uh, during this time, they turned to David their king, someone from the line of David, i.e. Jesus. And uh, they came to him in, in their difficulty, and they're referring to the last days as that particular time period. Now, Lee Strobel, from this uh, passage, asked the question, in what ways is Jesus the groom of an adulterous bride? And he draws from the larger narrative of the book of Hosea as well. I'll read his comments for you. Hosea depicts the Israelites as an adulterous bride who will be punished. The Israelites will have to live without a ruler who can lead them to God. However, when their desperation peaks, they will finally be given a Davidic king, the Messiah, who will reunite them with the Lord despite their unfaithfulness. In what way does this prophecy foreshadow Jesus as the groom of an adulterous bride? The New Testament contains many allegories of Christ as the bridegroom. The image of Christ as the faithful groom, we can see in Matthew 9.15 as well as John 3.29. These both clash with that of the unfaithful wife described in Hosea. God commanded Hosea to pursue his wife, who had returned to her life of immorality and literally buy her out of that life that she had made for herself. In the same way, Jesus also paid a high price for his bride. But who is Jesus' bride? According to Ephesians 5, 22 to 32, and 2 Corinthians 11, 2, the, the church is Jesus' bride. Although every individual strays from Jesus and betrays his love, Jesus' once-for-all payment buys each one back, just as Hosea and his payment bought back his adulterous wife. In the end, the church will finally be Jesus' pure bride. And we're not Jesus' pure bride by our own merit. We're Jesus' pure bride because he paid for our sins. So when I read this uh, association between the church and Gomer, it's, uh, it's quite painful, it's quite convicting to think that, that I, as a, as a believer, part of the church body, uh, could sin against Jesus in the same way that Gomer sinned against Hosea. And say, I read the passage and it, it just seems so heinous, so uh, disrespectful and, and evil really uh, quite perverted for her to, to go and, and do all these things and for Hosea to continue to love her like he did. Uh, it's quite a, a powerful uh, symbol that, that Hosea lived out for, for us and also for the Israelites. Um, I want to also remind you that, that because Jesus paid for our sins, we don't have to worry about those things that we've done in the past. Now, we should remember uh, the sins of the past so that we can work against them and, and live a better life for Christ. But at the same time, I think it's really important for us to, to put those, uh, that guilt aside because Jesus has paid for it. It's very clear here uh, in the passage, but also uh, in, in Lee Strobel's comments that, that that is in fact the case. Jesus has paid for our sins and we don't have to dwell on them anymore. Praise the Lord. Well, thanks for listening and I hope you have a fantastic day.